and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Ronnie Lambeth, and today I have a special guest, someone who started out at 22 years old, had $82,000 in credit card debt, and in three years, so the age 25, took that $82,000 in credit card debt, created a seven-figure business, and became a professional travel hacker, again, at age 25. So today's going to be a great episode. Uh, get out your pens and papers and start taking some notes. Today's guest is Jan Savinsky. Thanks, man, for coming on. Rodney, thank you for having me on. Appreciate it. This one's going to be uh, pretty exciting. You bet. So hopefully, the uh, my landscaper just showed up. I told him not to show up until after 4 o'clock, and they literally just showed up just now. So hopefully that does not come through. Can you hear it at all? I cannot hear it. We'll just like right, it. We'll good. Just it louder. Yeah, they're good. So they're up. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I come home and there was a flyer on my front door. And while all these adults are out watching or staying home watching Tiger King and feeling sorry for themselves and doing all the other stuff, complaining about not having any toilet paper, these teenage kids in my neighborhood are going door to door looking for business. And so I hired these kids. But I texted them this morning, said, don't show up until after four o'clock today. But you know, they're 12 and 13 years old. So what can you do? Yeah. Yeah. But they're out there hustling. So I thought it was pretty cool. I love it. I love it. So how did you go from $82,000 in credit card debt to a seven figure business and become a travel uh, professional traveler? Yeah, man. Three, the last three years, I'm 25 right now. Uh, 22 was my rock bottom That 82,000 bucks worth of debt. And these three years literally feel like, I mean, 10 or 20. It just feels like a completely different life. And the reason I got into 82K worth of debt is because I came out of college. Um, I have two degrees, by the way, which are absolutely useless. And I, I always wanted to become an entrepreneur. I always wanted to work myself. And uh, I had this belief that if you go and go full on, never work for anybody, go full force in becoming an entrepreneur and working for yourself. Uh, then it'll work out. And I had a bunch of available credit at 22 because I started travel hacking. And for that, you need a bunch of credit cards, you need a bunch of points. And I never used them for business. Okay. But when I decided to go and start a business because I left college, uh, nobody would hire me, even though I have two degrees, one from Berkeley, one from San Francisco State Finance and Marketing, uh, still nobody would hire me. So I'm like, okay, perfect opportunity to just go full force at entrepreneurship. Um, I was hustling, doing hustles here and there. Like I was doing a little fitness company. I was doing swimming lessons. I used to be a swimmer and picking up like maybe 3,800 bucks a month. Okay. So it was enough for uh, living expenses. I started five businesses at once because I thought if you throw a bunch of shit at the wall, something's got to stick. All right. And I used my, uh, I had about 100,000 in available credit across all my credit cards at the time. And I used them for running Facebook ads, picking up uh, picket signs to say buy houses. I was trying to do real estate wholesaling. Uh, I was trying to do a social media marketing agency from Ty Lopez. Um, you know, I was running ads. I was hiring people. And I thought it was all amazing. It, and it seemed to be because with travel hacking, I was getting free flights, free hotels. So I, I appeared to be running all these businesses, taking free first class flights. So, you know, it appears amazing. But yeah. after about eight months, uh, where I'm at is 82 grand worth of credit card debt because not a single one of these businesses was making me money. All my attention was completely uh, saturated by a different business. My focus was nowhere. So none of these businesses are making me money. I'm an 82K worth of debt. I am now... And I realized this, like I had, I had no understanding of credit uh, in regards to business until I was forced to learn it. And so with 82K worth of debt, I was paying about 35 or 4,000 bucks worth of interest to keep this debt at 82K. How much? 3,500 bucks or 4,000 okay. bucks a month. Okay. And keep in mind, I'm, I'm pulling in 3,800 bucks a month, uh, yeah. 40, 60 hours a week. And so... That was, uh, that was like my realization, like, like you, you got to make some sort of different choice. Like, it, it was such a rock bottom for me 
that I thought about going back to Russia where I was born. Came here when I was seven. I still got family. And I'm like, you know, maybe, maybe I just got to leave the country because I, I can't see a way out of the situation. Uh, luckily, something in my mind clicked and uh, I realized I need a skill. I need to go figure out how to run a business. Uh, I need to go get my environment straight because everybody I was hanging out with was just a freaking loser. Like, they, they were not doing anything. They were either a loser or neutral. The point is they were not helping me get further. And so I got myself a sales job. Sales job was for a crypto company at the time when crypto was kind of starting out and getting, uh, getting pretty good. And uh, I was really fascinated by crypto. So I'm like, awesome opportunity. And what I did, uh, what, 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 what a very good move that I made was I dropped everything that I was doing. I stopped doing all these. I was, I, I was not an entrepreneur, man. I had no skills. I had no idea how to run a business. Who am I to go start five different businesses at once and expect anything to work? Yeah. Not a chance. So I did nothing but two things. I hustled my ass off at that sales job, like 80 hours a week. All the time that I was putting into trying to do these businesses, all my other hustles, I put into the sales job. And this crypto stuff was awesome at the time. Right now, obviously, you know, it's not so good. But at the time, it was booming. Companies were raising money, uh, very smart people in the industry. So I started making money about three months in. I got my sales skill kind of uh, honed down. Um, I became number one in the sales company. I was just doing way more than anybody else. I was actually using my travel hacking skills to go get free flights to events where I would gather leads and nobody else in the company was doing this because obviously flights are expensive, but I was, this is a perfect opportunity to go get clients. Um, fourth month, I'm in Las Vegas at Mike Tyson's old house for his company meeting. And I'm, and I'm like, I'm meeting a bunch of, uh, Millionaires, billionaires. There are a couple of guys that uh, started uh, EOS, so one of like one of the top tokens that raised a couple billion bucks. Um, and that was, you know, that three months, four months was just a massive mindset change. Forget the, you know, forget the money I was making. I was, I started making about fifteen thousand bucks a month. It was just a crazy mindset change because the people that I was surrounding myself with were only my clients or company founders or CEOs, and they were doing. They were, they were just working nonstop, making big moves, doing things that I've never seen in my life. So my mind just completely shifted and it was no longer work for me. I was, I was focusing on how does the company that I work for, how do they run their business? How do they hire a team? How are they making these connections? How do they get me so interested in working for them and making all these moves for this company? How can I do the same thing for myself? And when I started focusing on all these things, not just the income, that's when, I mean, I just, I just stayed number one at the sales position because the only thing I was doing was focusing on building myself at that company, but focusing on actually building the company up itself because I'm, 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 I'm learning how was the business run, how was everything done. Uh, crypto. Let me, let me stop you there for a second. Yeah. So you did the American dream, or I would call it the American nightmare. You got good grades. You went to some great colleges. Did you rack up any student loan debt? No, all the hustles that I was uh, doing at the time okay. uh, paid off my paid off my tuition. All right, so good. Yeah. So then you you get out. You can't get a job. So you got two degrees. Can't get a job. You're in now the American nightmare, and you go get a sales job. Which I think, and I've said this so many times, sales is the number one profession on the planet. I mean, it, it, there's no limit to how much money you can make. You can go anywhere if you're good at sales. You, they could take everything away from you today and tomorrow. You could be successful again if you're good at sales. And it's the oldest profession on the planet as well, not the other one. Because it was sales to get the other one to work, right? 100%. 100%. So you went into sales and then you had a big mind shift in and mindset change to where you started working on yourself, you change your environment, you got not got rid of your old friends, but you you, you I got rid of close proximity with more successful people. And I got you, rid of everybody, man. I stopped talking. Okay. I, I literally isolated myself. Okay. From everybody that I used to talk to, I just I just went ghost and did nothing but go hustle at that sales job. 
I mean, that, that the was reason I best. wanted to interrupt you on that, Jan, is because people don't realize how important that is to eliminate the dead weight. And what I mean by dead weight is if that person that you're hanging out with is living the lifestyle that you want and they have what you want and then hang out with them. But if, if that's not what you want for your life, then you need to get rid of them or separate from them. And I'm not saying to blow, you know, blow everything up and burn down your bridges and leave your family. There's a, a, a good way to do it. But there are some people in your life that are toxic that you need to get rid of. And sometimes they're family members. So it's important for the listeners to hear that, that you did that. You got rid of all your friends. You got new friends, a new mindset, started working on yourself. And now you're making 15 grand a month. It was huge. I've never made that much money in my life. Yeah, it's a lot of money. I mean, three months, the average American makes $47,000 a year. So in three months, you're making what the average person makes in a year. Yeah. It's uh it was crazy because yeah. the first three months I wasn't I wasn't getting anything done and I was so frustrated. But the reality was I didn't have a skill. When I when I spent those three months doing 60 to 80 hours a week just focusing on my sales skills mm -hmm. and then bam it clicked. I did my first deal where I made five thousand bucks commission and I'm like and then it just it just started rolling from there. Yeah. It became consistent. My my environment became better. My brain started working. I was no longer frustrated not not being able to see how a deal is closed. Like it's like like you were, we we definitely think alike in terms of sales being the number one skill. Because it's not about just, you know, having a job forever. It's about recognizing problems. It's about being able to provide a solution. It's more it's more about being able to communicate a thousand times better in any situation. Yeah. And so, and so after about, uh, so this is the first thing I did, that sales job. That was my entire focus uh, besides this second thing. The second thing I started learning was credit because I, I knew I was getting screwed by the banks in every possible way. I mean, my credit score was a 490. I had 82K in debt. 40k was in collections. I was getting sued by two banks, and I was I was uh, you know I was ignoring the situation for some time by just I took a trip to Japan for like three months. Uh, you know the flight was free. I got it with points. Hotel was free. You know, uh, and I was ignoring it. But when I came back, this like my mailbox was like this full, just like red envelopes. Yep. And so, you know, that, that, that's how bad the situation was. Uh, but I started learning credit. I was doing a sales job and I was learning credit. Uh, I tried to go to a bunch of uh, credit repair companies in the beginning to try to fix my credit. Uh, but the majority of them um, don't do anything. Unlike you guys, they, they go and charge per month whether they do anything or not. You guys charge for results, which is, which is awesome. It's just like... Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know any companies that do that. So the companies I was hiring at the beginning, they weren't doing anything at all. Like maybe I got one thing removed, but then it came back the next month. Yeah. So I spent uh, these six months learning credit repair at first. Okay. Uh, I got my collections removed. I got all the derogatories removed. I got 30 K that I paid off with the money that I was making from the sales job, but like 40 K that was already in collections that was already done with. Um, I got removed. I basically did a wipe of, uh, uh, you know, e even though my relationships with those banks uh, are gone, it doesn't necessarily matter because the collections are no longer reporting on my, on my credit profile. Yeah. Um, and the debt was moved to banks that I didn't care about losing a relationship with. Yeah. And, there, and there's lots of banks. You know, this isn't Russia and this is not Canada where there's eight banks. You know, we have. I don't know if we have thousands, but I, I would I would guess we have thousands of banks here in the United States to work with. So many, so many. And that's one important thing that I learned. Move debt to banks that you don't care about ruining yeah. your relationship with. Get rid of it. Um, so let's just fast forward six months. I'm killing it at the sales job. I'm honing down my sales skills, learning how the business is run. I'm making some money. 
Um, I finally got to the point where I am worth nothing, zero dollars, but I've never been happier because my credit is now like 750 or 760. Uh, I now got a consistent income of about 15,000 bucks, give or take, every single month. Uh, I've got a sales skill that I've been working on for months now, and it's working. I know how a business, that particular business is around at least, my environment is on point, and now I understand how, how to not get screwed by the banks, but more importantly, how I can leverage credit to go and do deals. Like I, like that point right there, I've never been happier in my life to have nothing in my bank account because I realized the potential I now have going forward. Mm-hmm. And going forward, the environment from that sales job I had was guys doing not only crypto, they were doing real estate, they were doing e they were doing all these other businesses that I realized you can leverage credit for. And so after watching uh, a couple of guys closely in their other businesses, I decided to go and leverage, uh, leverage some of the capital that I, that I now scaled, uh, particularly 0% capital. And I started doing uh, some real estate deals, single family stuff. And I started working kind of, kind of as a bank for these deals. I was not really participating in the flips. Kind of wholesaling them? Yeah, I was, I was basically funding uh, the deals. They needed uh, to do like a three-month flip or whatever it is. Okay. Uh, and I started making my money here and there, a couple thousand bucks a month. Uh, then I started uh, uh, funding some e-com deals with Amazon, okay. another couple thousand bucks a month. Eight months later, I'm still at the sales job. I'm, I'm killing it. My network has become pretty damn awesome at this point. And I realize I'm making more money leveraging credit at this point than I am on my sales job. So I'm pulling in about 15 k okay. It's going down now because I'm putting more focus on the credit side. Yeah, but the credit side, I you know I'm realizing that hey, I'm making more money here than trading my time at the sales job, and now I can go back to the travel hacking stuff. So now I'm like I'm more, uh, you know, I'm still doing deals with the sales company, but now I'm going back to traveling. So now I'm doing uh, you know a couple flights a month now, go to different countries, uh, realizing hey, I'm, I'm still making the same amount of money, or even more money now. Yeah. And then so finally it came to a point where I'm like, all right, it's time. It's, it's finally time to, what I, to do what I actually wanted to do in the beginning, which is work for myself. So I left that sales job, went full time on the credit side, and then I decided I'm going to teach people how to do the same thing. And then so uh, it was about a year and three months ago now, I opened up my program where I teach people how to go uh, – Leverage credit for real estate, for e-com, to do travel hacking. And that business alone did seven figures since that time, on top of the stuff I'm doing with real estate. Um, the deals I was doing with real estate in the beginning were fairly small, like we talked about before the call. Um, they were pretty small. So now my focus is not to go and do single family stuff or do small Amazon stuff. Uh, my focus going forward especially because of COVID-19 and we're, you know, we're seeing the recession that's happening right now. Yeah. Uh, real estate is probably uh, going to be a pretty good bet a couple of years from now, specifically multifamily. And this is where all my focus is going in terms of scaling my capital, buying power, relationships, networks, experience. It's going into multifamily. The, the lifestyle that I'm building for myself is – Continuing to go and take 100 flights a year, 27 countries or whatever I did in 2019, and still cash flow passively, uh, at, least, at least what I'm doing right now. This sure. is a couple of years from now. Five-year five year goal is to have uh, a six-figure passive, passive income, still have the same lifestyle, and just scale whatever I'm doing uh, from there. Yeah, and you'll be able to do that if you do what I call stack and rack, which is, you know, live frugally. And I'm not talking about a discount Dave way to live, cutting coupons and cutting everything up. But live, um, li- you know, spend less money than what you make. I live off about 5% of my income and I invest 90 to 95% of everything I make. I buy multifamily apartment complexes. I'm the same way. You, if you can live, frugally invest the rest 
do what other people aren't willing to do so you can have the life that other people can't, you know? And so invest now and that stuff's going to compound so fast for you that I can see that, see you in three to five years having 30 to $50 million of apartment complexes that are cash flowing, you know, 20, 30 grand a month. And so now you're making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Most of it's going to be tax free because you're going to pull it out through a line of credit. And then the tenants pay back the line of credit. And when you need some more money, you pull it out again. So it's, there's not a lot of income coming to you. It's loans coming to you. And that's all tax free because it's a loan. So that's really cool that you did all of that with the credit and travel. What's some, what's some credit travel hacks that you can share? Credit travel hacks. Uh, if somebody wants to go and get started with uh, travel hacking, the first way is to go and do it with uh, credit card points. Just understanding the credit card system, how to get approvals, a lot more approvals than you would if you were just applying randomly. So that's learning rules like Chase 524 rule, where if you have five or more accounts in the last 24 months, then Chase will not extend you credit. Chase has awesome points, the UR points that you can get 1.5 times if you have Chase Sapphire Reserve, which if you're doing something with Ecom, you're getting, you're getting a crazy amount of points. Uh, go and use for flights or for hotels. And if you're somebody that already has a couple points, you understand how to get points, sign-up bonuses, uh, maybe you do some manufactured spending, uh, a website, um, uh, it's it's actually been updated. Maybe maybe we can link it uh, link it down below. The website will be in the show notes. But what is this website that you want to put in the notes? This website basically is an algorithm that checks every single flight booking based on points. Okay. Okay. So for example, um, I took a flight to Japan. I wanted to go business or first class, and a business class ticket to Japan, if you're booking with points, is probably going to be around a quarter million points. You're doing first class of business, you're booking a week or two in advance. Uh, this website is, uh, is going gonna, is gonna to check all the different uh, bookings for that particular flight or that particular destination route. And it's going to see if there's any much better deals if you go and transfer your points to, let's say, Japan Airlines. And so this same deal that I was going to pay a quarter million points for, I got for 80,000 points instead. Oh, wow. That's a big difference. That's, that's 800 bucks. It's huge. It's huge. And that's, if you're using a Capital One Venture card, which is my favorite travel card, that's $400. Yeah. What it costs you to go to Japan, 400 bucks. It's, it's insane. But definitely an awesome site for any, anybody to use. Yeah. Uh, internal bank rules are super important to go and get, up and get applications approved uh, so you can maximize the sign-up bonuses. Another, another website that uh, people should go to just to get an idea of how credit card points work, what kind of offers are out there, how to maximize these offers is uscreditcardguide.com. Uscreditcardguide.com. Okay, cool. Yeah. That one's going to show all the, credit, all the big credit cards available that have decent sized bonuses. They're not going to show credit unions, obviously, uh, but they're going to show like Amex, Chase, Barclays. And they're going to show you when these offers were the highest, when they were the lowest, when okay. is a good time to apply, um, how can you maximize the offer, maybe by going incognito, for example, or going to a certain location or whatever it is. They okay. tell you all that stuff. So right. just by learning that, you can get into travel hacking, leveraging credit. So simple, simple as that. Doing application sequences. Um, applying on the same day this way you can stack accounts per inquiry mm -hmm. so like for example uh, and these are just like internal bank rules that you can with time go Google check uh, data points um, Chase will give you two credit cards uh, two credit card approvals per inquiry most cases Amex if you're a customer already they'll give you four account approvals per inquiry so instead of applying one day, another day, another day, and getting four inquiry, right. they're going to kill your approval odds for the next application. You go and apply on the same day. Yeah. Yeah, we actually just developed 
and it's fully functional right now. We have a little AI software going with one of my companies where we can apply for five, oh, it's a little over 500 now, credit cards, business credit cards in one day and our software does everything. And it will, what will happen is because we're doing all 500 in one day, all of the inquiries show up the following day. So these 500 credit card companies don't see the inquiry. And then we have the inquiries removed in about five to seven days after that. So it's a way for our business credit clients. They can go in, we submit it, and it just starts ticking and filling everything out. And how we did that is we went to all of these banks and credit card companies, grabbed all of their information, API'd it with our software. And once we put it in, we hit enter, and it just, the robot goes to work and gets you all these credit cards, and then our system will delete the inquiries afterwards. No kidding. Yeah. That's like, that's like what, uh, you know, Doing application sequences for 10 cards, that's like basically that on scale. Yeah, so it's it's all through our AI and through our software. And when I say AI, it's not really AI, but it knows how to read a credit card application because we pre-program. So it's not really AI, but it's pre-programmed right. applications into our software. The majority of the time, inquiries are going to be appearing within a couple minutes. Why Why are these appearing the next day? Yeah, because what's happening is... It'll show up in a couple minutes, but because it's right then during that time when the software's hitting it, the banks don't see it. I see. So it can show up, but that bank has to furnish the data to eOscar. eOscar then is going to send it over to the credit bureaus, and there's a time frame in that for that to happen. Which is the same reason that if you go out and apply for a car or a credit card, sometimes it takes a couple days for your monitoring service to even notify you. Yeah. Because not instantaneous to report to the bureaus. Some of these furnishers report once a month, which is why if you pay off your credit card today, it could take 30 to 45 days for the balance to report because they only report once a month. Right. And so we know which banks will report right away and we avoid those. So it, it's generally 24 hours before these inquiries show up. And then because they're all credit card inquiries, According to your FICO score, it shows up as one inquiry. So you can have 500 credit card inquiries in the same 45-day window. It still shows up as one according to your scores. Now, it'll show up on your credit report as all these inquiries, but on your score, it only impacts as if it was one credit card inquiry. But you're slowly removing them in five to seven days. Yeah, we go and remove them anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the whole... That's the whole uh, sequence that I teach you go and apply for a bunch in one day the ones that do not get approved those inquiries are removed and then you wait about six months because inquiries after six months don't necessarily affect you too much anymore yeah. and then you do an additional sequence good so how, where can people find you Instagram is the best place I spend all day on Instagram making content right. every single day haven't missed haven't missed 700 days in not in not posting so i've done really? second days uh, instagram it's uh, if you just want uh, to uh, search up jan stavisky uh, first name y-a-n last name s-t-a-v-i-s-s-k-i uh, then they'll find me i'm All changing right. the that answer the probably uh, so you know if you just search up my name they'll find it yeah we'll put that in the show notes so you can find it chastity will, my producer chastity will put that in there uh, anything else you want to cover before we we end up uh, in this podcast today. Uh, you know, the, the important thing is, uh, depending on when this goes live, people got to get their credit straight right now, especially leverage this COVID uh, situation where uh, these banks, credit bureaus are understaffed. They still have to go in. Uh, they still have to go respond within 30 days. A lot of times they're not able to. So you can leverage that to go and remove a lot of the derogatory marks that you get reporting on the credit report. Because that'll give you an opportunity to go into the recession, potentially capitalizing on it, picking up real estate, funding a business, whatever that is. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And that's what I've been telling people is now is the time to get your credit fixed. The banks, the collection companies and credit bureaus are short staff. They did the government changed the Fair Credit Report Act for us. So they can't legally report us late for the next six months. But it did not change it for them. 
So they still have to respond within 30 days when you dispute it. And so right now is a great time to get your credit fixed. We, we have more people hiring us now than they ever have in the past because we are paid on results. So if you need your credit fixed, you can simply go to the show notes or you go to ronnielambit.com and get started on credit repair and get you going with that. So Jan, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. And again, how can people find you on Instagram? Thank right. you for having me on. Uh, the best way is Instagram. Instagram, just uh, look up a Jan Stavisky, Y-A-N, last name S-T-A-V-I-S-S-K-I. That's also the Instagram handle right now. Okay. By the time this goes live, probably going to change. But if they just search up my name, easily, fat, easily find I'll find you. All right, man. Enjoy your quarantine time in L.A. It's a little bit nicer here in Idaho. <laughs> It's it's not as locked down as California is. We still have our civil freedoms for the most part. Hey man, it's not it's not bad. Everybody's home. This is the time to work even harder. Uh, yeah. The people that want to go find a job, they can reach out easier to these companies. If you want to go and get more clients, this is an even better time to go do so. I mean, this is just an opportunity. Nothing nothing really has changed for the people that have an online business. Hasn't really changed for me, except for I'm working harder now than I did in the last 10 years. I haven't had a day off since February. Thank you. So, but anyway, hey, it's great having you on. We'll talk to you later. Awesome, brother. Thank you. Be back.